Okay, uh, now that's out of the way. Let's just answer this question. No, I'm not a youth pastor, okay? <laughs> to my face like that a lot. They forget that this is where my feelings live. Uh, get a little bit hurtful. Connor, welcome back. We're back. We are back. Keep going. All right, so we got our first guest of the day. Ryan Kelly also goes by Youth Pastor Ryan. Ryan, how you doing today? I'm doing great, guys. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Trying to get we're excited to have you on. <laughs> yeah, we're just, <laughs> trying to get a good spot. If I, need, if I need to change my mic or anything like that, any any different adjustments? No, you sound good. Oh, sound good, look good. There you go. So how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I am, uh, yeah, just kind of doing my thing. Happy to be here. I got to be honest, I woke up, took a shower, and was like, it's time to get there. And so I, I sat down <laughs> at my desk, and I'm, here we are. <laughs> yeah, same, except I did. I woke up and ran and then did homework and then got here. I was like, it's time to go. And I'm already like, man, I did way too much. I should have just got up and got away. It's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's COVID stuff. You know what I mean? It's like I'm supposed to lay in bed and just and just avoid it. That's that's my effort for today. <laughs> like, I didn't want to get stuck into that. I When COVID started, I was like, I'm going to be one of the people that work out that's going to be my thing now and now nice. i'm in a good routine and then when covid's done then i become the person that lays in bed <laughs> then i go to that <laughs> side <laughs> once well, i can go like outside that. <laughs> yeah that's it that's when that happens so i'm sure you get this question all the time but we're just wondering how do you come up with youth pastor ryan i know in your stand-up it says you say because you look young but is there more meaning to it there absolutely is. so it's funny because i have accidentally convinced uh, a lot of people and I used to have it in my TikTok bio, but I just kind of ran out of space to put not a real youth pastor. Um, uh, Cause I'm not, uh, I just, <laughs> I just look like one. And uh, I've had, I've had literally dozens of people come up to me in real life and be like, people love to like either guess or just tell me what I look like, which has been like kind of nice and kind of hurtful. A lot of times, like I, uh, I, I have had a lot of people come up to me and be like, are you a youth pastor? And it's like, first off, you don't know me. Second off, a little hurtful. Uh, like that's, <laughs> So that's been it. So it became part of my standup as just like a lot of people ask me if I'm a youth pastor. And so I was getting on a TikTok and I, I just, I, I think Ryan Kelly comedy was already taken. And so I was just like, fine, youth pastor Ryan. And here we are. So it got <laughs> kind of out you, of hand. When did you start getting onto TikTok? So I, so I used to do things on Instagram before Reels came out and things like that, which mm -hmm. is the worst way I to try to promote yourself. I don't even know uh, what Reels is. <laughs> Am I that far behind in this? <laughs> yeah, you're, like, you're a little far behind, Reels. Chris, but it's okay. You're good. Reels is new. Reels is pretty new. It's it's essentially Instagram's competition with TikTok, which is actually okay. pushing really hard right now, uh, which is nice for us who already have like TikTok Falling. stuff. We can just be like, copy, paste. Um, <laughs> which has been great. But uh, yeah, so Instagram Reels is essentially that competition, but it was before that. And so there was no spread whatsoever. And I had a buddy of mine named Casey Jones, who, uh, I got a question. Do you guys, are you guys a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at all? Mm. Is that a question? Okay, so my buddy, you know, awesome, <laughs> cool, cool. Um, Casey Jones is actually getting ready to marry a girl named April. And we're like, this is the greatest crossover ever. Like this is <laughs> April O'Neil, it happened. Um, but he texted me and he was like, hey man, I think your stuff would do a lot better on TikTok. You should try that. And I was like, I never heard of TikTok. I was like, nah, I'll post one video and see how it does. And he texted me the next day and was like, man, you should check your TikTok. And I had 10,000 followers and 25,000 views on that first video, which is more than I'd ever had on anything ever. And so I was like, this is the new thing that I'll do for the rest of my life, I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, October 15th of 2019 was when I got on TikTok. And did you, so you, you said that you got all those followers uh, pretty pretty quickly. So once you got those followers, you're like, all right, I'm going to do this every day. Or did it kind of build up? And then, then you started doing it more often. I definitely, so I already had some stuff geared over from like Instagram stuff. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I'll just keep posting those and see how that does. And then I realized, oh, I need to keep going. Um, and I, and it was fun. It was just, it was, it's, I, I love math and that kind of competitive section of like, all right, we're, we're growing. Mm -hmm. Um and, and at the comedy club that I was with, they were not booking me as regularly, or they weren't gonna book me for like higher up stuff because they're like, you need a social media following, you just need it. And, uh, and I was like, okay. And also like, on a very candid note, like, like Disney also seemed to be, in, so I worked for Disneyland 
Uh, if you wanted to do certain things at Disneyland, they, they seem to like heavily imply that like a social media following would, would be appreciated. And I was like, and I, I was pretty salty about that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I've got a marketing degree. Let's do this. And here we, here we are. Um, that's, that's the most Disney sounding thing I think I've heard. You know, right. it doesn't help if you have a big following that you could promote us with. <laughs> Yeah, right. That would, that would be bad. <laughs> like, I was like, okay. Um, so yeah, that was that was it. It was uh, it was so fun. And so what I what I started doing is I started doing like my story times, and all of my uh, stand up is storytelling based. So that mm -hmm. was very helpful. The first video that ever blew up was, and I remember it blowing up. It was a weird moment because I went to a party that night, and I was remember where we could go talk to people. That was nice. Um, uh, and so Ten years ago. Yeah, right. It's been 84 years. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was there and it was getting 200,000 views an hour, every hour for seven hours. And I was like, this is going viral. I'm it's like, uh, uh, and it was, it was a story of me getting uh, pulled over because I was, I used to do uh, like kids parties dressed as Spider-Man. I got pulled mm -hmm. over dressed as Spider-Man and the cop's name was Ben. And so essentially it ends with me going, thanks Uncle Ben. Cause it was like, this is the craziest thing ever. Um, and that video went viral and another video of me uh, and a buddy of mine, cause I look at, I, one of my best friends, his name is TJ. TJ is the reverse of me. He's six, three, uh, like he's, he's about 300 pounds. And, and he's, he's like a Cuban guy with like curly black fluffy hair. He's the most delight. You look at TJ and you just smile. And he's just like the happiest guy, but he married a girl that looks exactly like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> which we got some questions for, um, uh, and, and I did that video, that video also popped up. They both popped off within a week of each other. Uh, one of them I think is currently sitting at like 14 million views and the other one's sitting at like eight. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew that one popped off when all of a sudden I saw it translating, like I was getting tagged on things of it translating into Arabic and it was oh. like going off and I was like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was... That's kind of how it all got so, started. So you're telling me that you have videos that people will translate into other languages so they can spread other places like I, all over the world. I guess so, yeah. It was, that's, yeah, that, that's what happened. That's insane. That's actually insane Like to think like your videos are getting the same treatment as a Pixar movie. Right. Oh my gosh, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess for the, like, there's, there's different translations for the world to see, which is crazy to me. Um, how, how would you describe the community, the creator community on TikTok? Like, how would you describe how people are and different people that create and stuff like that? So there's, I, I feel like you could put into like little sections when you're on TikTok. And I love the section that I've been put into, to be completely honest. Um, I think that there's a lot of different, there's obviously, and, and depends on what you mean by like, all sorts of creators, but the creators that I get to hang out with and get to perform with, I love them so much. Um, I, I have a series with a guy named Beer Bong John, and, uh, and we do something called the Corruption Series, which was just a video that we, it started out as a total joke, and then it's just kind of, people ended up wanting to see me purify him, him corrupt me, and we thought <laughs> that that was so much fun. And so we still do that. Like Beer Bong John, uh, there's a guy named Iron Sanctuary, Kevin, he's amazing. Uh, one of my buddies, Jesse, the Snickle, like there's, all of the people that I get to perform with are fantastic, and I, I love them to death. Yeah. Is it uh, is it tough to kind of be popular on TikTok? And what I kind of mean by it is, does is there like extra pressure now that you're kind of you have such a big following? Are you constantly having to put out new videos? Do you feel that pressure on the daily basis, kind of? And is it like kind of get in the way of your other you know projects that you're trying to work on? You know, uh, TikTok has pretty much become the main project at the moment. So thankfully okay. it is, uh, but there is, there's pressure. There, there's absolutely pressure. I put out three, uh, mm -hmm. two to three videos a day, every day. Um, so that's, that can be a lot sometimes, but mm -hmm. also uh, there is, there is the pressure of realizing that this is because it is my main source. Like uh, right now I'm fully, I am a creator, I guess a yeah. content creator, whatever mm -hmm. for a job, uh, <laughs> because we all got let go at Disney. So I was like, well, I guess this is what we do now. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there, there's definitely some heavy pressure with that, especially when the algorithm goes down and does random things. And I mean, I'll talk to creators that are even much bigger than me, like buddies with five, six million followers that are just like, 
what is going on? It's like, okay, it's not just me right now. Nice, nice, nice. Um, <laughs> it was definitely that pressure. But, you know, I feel like uh, a lot of the time I write better under pressure. That's, that's where a lot of times I will write my stand-up right before I step on the stage. Okay. Uh, wow. So, so sometimes that helps. Like the Jay-Z yeah. of stand-up. But, <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be on my, my gravestone, please. <laughs> he <laughs> was the Jay Z of stand up. <laughs> well, you got it. And you have to put, obviously, Chris Schnabel after it because. Yeah. He oh, absolutely. Well I, want you know it's where it's due. I want my credit where it's due. I want my credit. Have you seen a lot of new content creators with COVID going on for that exact reason of getting let go of places and stuff like that? Or has it kind of been not as many people getting on there? I feel like I've seen more people on Twitch, definitely. But what about TikTok? Definitely Twitch. Uh, I also think TikTok, though. I think right now, though, I think I'm very fortunate for where I got into TikTok. People can still break through, but it is ho- much harder than when I got on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I, but I definitely have still seen people that a lot of people that got let go, and a lot of people that are just trying to trying to figure it out. Definitely a lot on Twitch, uh, and definitely a lot of. But that's the, that's the thing with Twitch is you definitely need other places to be able to promote that stuff. That's what yeah. people always pop into chats and they're like, "Any streaming advice?" I was like, "Post it everywhere." Like yeah. clips and things like that because you just need to get brought back to you yeah a lot of like especially nowadays if you have a following somewhere else it's probably a little bit easy, but i know a lot of people are like i'm gonna start streaming on twitch and i'm like good luck yeah good luck. what are you gonna grind. stream i'm gonna stream among us and call of duty yeah good luck guy <laughs> good yeah, luck, all right. yeah. <laughs> let's stream the two oh. games that are the most popular right and that have forty thousand people streaming them a night like exactly yeah and when there's people that have got like two thousand people watching them or even like like it's just you're not going to show up on the recommended page which is tough and, and that's, so that's where yeah. you need to be at some point right <laughs> you want to get on the recommended page because that's how you're going to get all your the the big biggest following right i would imagine absolutely also, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but I'm impressed by it. But like Twitch's recommended page puts me on like TikTok Twitch recommended. And I love that. I don't know why, but like all of a sudden I'll see my recommended page. It's like all TikTokers that I know. I'm like, what? Like, like this is cool. So I don't know what their algorithm is, but it's cool. I just, they just got one person like plugging away, like Ryan Kelly. Yeah, let's put all, let's all put Twitch. Down. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he knows this person and this person. Like, just <laughs> it's a tree. It's a tree. Oh, he knows these people. Then he definitely belongs on here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you know those people. You wouldn't be on that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> out. He's out. Uh, so, so you mentioned earlier when we were talking that you're doing two to three videos a day, and you also had mentioned that your process for stand up is kind of you know, getting up there, pressuring yourself and doing it right before. Is that the same thing with your videos since you're doing so many a day? Or is it kind of a, the night before you think, all right, I've got a couple of little ideas. Let's, let's work on them in the morning. Definitely. So it, it's kind of a mix of both. Okay. Um, there's definitely also what I've learned is that the videos you put the least amount of effort in. Like if I just like, I need a video and I do something for nine seconds, it's like, well, that's going to hit a million views. And I'm like, well, fun, 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 fun. <laughs> um, or it's like a shot two hours of this. It's got different cuts, takes, music. And it's like, Ryan, that gets you four views and a nice high five. Like, awesome, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, What's better, a million views or the high five? Come on. Right, uh, we lo- we look, <laughs> ever, ever since quarantine, I'll take some human connection. Uh, like that's, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Uh, so because of that, that's actually normally what just my life has been just an insane group of things happening to me, to be completely mm-hmm. honest. Like, I mean, I was on a plane recently that got struck by lightning. That really happened. Like, like I was just oh, like, and that, that happens more frequently than you. I was going to say, I think that happens frequently though, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It's, it's pretty frequent. And it's, but it's also one of those things that it's like, it, apparently every plane gets struck like twice a year or something like that. That's one of the stats that I saw, but I was there. And I've also like, like just life has kind of done that regularly where I'm just like, all right, well, that's that's gets written down in my phone into my section mm-hmm. of things I got to talk about now. Um, but yeah, it uh, it kind of changes based on the day. What I'm talking about, comment section is, is helpful for sure because people say either funny things or dumb things, and it's like, well, here we go. This is a softball. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What was what was that experience? Is it like, do you know that the plane was just struck by lightning? I've never been fortunate enough to be on a plane that was struck by lightning. So it's most of the time you can't tell if a plane gets struck by lightning, except for it was super bright and all the windows were open and the, the plane was super dark. And windows were open. Oh, well, that, that, yeah, this, <laughs> ah, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the coverings were up and uh, all of a sudden it got so bright and you can hear the thunder really quick, especially when it was that close. Yeah. And so people, people screamed, but I've, I've been in a plane crash before, to be honest. So I was just like, that's a, 
I, I was just like, well, this. So, what my actual response was is everyone screamed, and I looked up and went, "Come on, don't tease me." Twice. I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. What happened when like, you were in a plane crash? Oh gosh. So I was flying back from Newark to St. Louis. I was with my little brother. Um, this is actually part of my stand-up, so I, I'm going to try to tell it in a way that's not just the like <laughs> bit form. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, we're on this plane, and it's like a, I think it's an Ember 380. We're in like a, a two seat and a one seat. We're in the two seat. We're sitting in the emergency exit row, which you know normally you get there for extra leg room, not to help. Uh, but, <laughs> but here we are. Uh, and so my little brother's there, and we were flying through an electrical storm. The plane just looks weird. For some reason, I just had a bad feeling. But I was like, this is the first time I am not going to be afraid of flying. Poor choice. Uh, and I that's always when it happens oh you're not right oh you're not gonna be afraid watch this hold my beer yeah right yeah (laughs) we're gonna drop this on you um so we're flying through this electrical storm and we get out of the electrical storm and all of a sudden we like you turn the plane like we missed our exit like like skirt skirt um and we when that happened uh two oxygen masks in the front of the plane deployed just in the front which I was like if if you know upgraded to first class came with survival would have done it uh (laughs) And so I, we were turning back into the electrical storm. The pilot comes over and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, we're having severe technical malfunctions. We're going to have to make an emergency landing. And that's, I kid you not, I could not make this up. This is when the flight attendants came running through the cabin going, call your loved ones, call your loved ones, call your loved ones. Oh my God. And so we're like, well, this is neat. Um, my little brother, whenever he gets scared, nervous, or injured, he just passes out. So he just possums next to me. And I have an essential tremor. So we're the worst emergency exit row team in the history of the world right now. Like we're not going to make it. Uh, and we, we started going back towards now. An important thing is that uh, when this happened, the plane got very quiet, too quiet, uh, because both of our engines had overheated and shut down. Now, also, I could hear wind coming by that door because that door was not fully shut. The one that the one I am sitting next to. Great. And there's icing on the wings so that they cannot control the flaps. So they're trying to cool the engines heat the wings, the emergency exit row, like we can't get super high because otherwise we'll lose cabin pressure. Um, and so I am sitting there and we tilt like at the top of a roller coaster, like right before you drop. And we are like that for like 30 minutes. And I'm sitting there at like 20 minutes in, like we're gonna run out of space. <laughs> um, but we hit so hard at the ground at Newark because we went back to Newark that our wheels popped, our left wheels popped and it kind of skipped us. And then it started to tilt the plane. I was like, this is, this is not how planes land. But then we hit again on the right side and wheels on that side popped and it evened us out. We just skidded to the end of the runway. I wow. hate that story. I'm <laughs> that. And the My most, the worst nightmare. I am such a nervous flyer. And that just, that just, that ruined it. I, I, I think ruined I just ruined it. flying for Connor. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like the worst part of that story is you were back in Jersey at the end of it. <laughs> couldn't even get out of jersey you couldn't even leave jersey <laughs> even leave jersey i think it's i do think it's funny that you said that you need to cool down the engines but heat up the wings they're on the same spot they're four like. inches away from each other <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's even happen. so, so yeah. let's go past so speaking of your comedy career when did you start getting into that because you just told us you got an mba congratulations on that by the way oh, that's not the easiest thing to get so how did you get into comedy in the first place so I have done improv for, gosh, it's probably 12 years now. Mm. Um, and I, I've done it since I was very young and I, I loved it. And, and improv comedy is, is so much, so much fun. Uh, but you will never get paid to do it. You know what I mean? Like that's, um, and so I realized that I was, uh, it's actually, it kinda, it, it, it's kind of a weird story. So I did, I did improv in like middle school, high school. Uh, that we had an improv team at our school, which was amazing. Actually, it was so much fun. And, uh, and we perform regularly. Our teacher was taught by Del Close, who's like the founding father of improv through like mm-hmm. Second City and Improv Olympic. And so I went into college and I went to a school called Calvin College. I was going to go uh, there for, because uh, they had a really good improv team. And they had a really good engineering program. Uh, <laughs> things didn't work out. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> did not, uh, I was not made for engineering at all. And, uh, and I, my first year, I uh, I didn't get on the improv team, and uh, so you got the double whammy right out the gate. <laughs> right out the gate, it was <laughs> honestly like it was super crushing. I was like, oh, I hated what I was studying. I didn't get in, and turns out I found out later why I didn't get in. There was a girl on the team who had either dated someone or knew someone that looked like me, and she did not like my face. Oh, and of so That's and I was and I was told this later. I was like, are you kidding me? And plus, I was the only one that had like professional training or experience or things like that. And so I was like, what? 
And so the net, I went home that winter and I did stand up for the first time at a place called the Funny Bone in Valley Park, which is now closed in St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> and, and I was like, I realized stand up was the only thing that I could control purely by myself. If I was, if I was funny, I was funny. Mm. If I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, but that was, it wasn't based on a team and it wasn't, the people judging me were there to laugh. Yeah. Um, unless you go to an open mic, in which case, no, they're not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're looking to ridicule you there, right? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so, yeah, I just, I, I did it kind of casually though, because I also found another group, like an improv group in town. And I was like, oh, I'll perform with them. It's a group called Fictional Friends. They performed out of a dive bar called Mulligans. This was a biker bar that like, they just had like a stage in the back, normally used for heavy metal concerts. And they were like, do you guys want to do improv back there? And we were like, yeah, we do. And so we'd have these guys that all look like they could kill me watching me do clean improv comedy. Mm. It was... Uh, it was, it was, it was so much fun. Did they it enjoy so it? Good. They did. They love it. They come back every week and they'd watch. And one, one of my favorite moments is in college, I was like, I went to Mulligan's on a Saturday, which normally we'd perform on a Wednesday. Um, uh, very youth group of youth pastor, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and so we'd, uh, I was in, I was in this bar and, and there were a whole bunch of college guys that came in because there was a lot of colleges around our town. And, uh, these were like some big frat jock guys. And at one point, like, they're drinking. I just went up to the bar. I get a drink. And I got, like, a, just a silly, zippy energy to me. And I'm, I was like, can I, have, can I have this? And uh, one of these dudes looks over at me, like, kind of bumps into me. I went, oh, I'm sorry. And he goes, yeah, you are. I went, okay. And then he's like, and then he goes, hey, do you, and he just leaves in, hey, do you want to fight? And I go, hey, man, I'm just trying to get a drink. And that's when there were two guys, because I had stepped back from the, the bikers that knew me, that put a hand on each of my shoulders and went, yeah, we want to fight. <laughs> And I was That's like, awesome. this is the coolest moment ever. <laughs> like this is, and then that dude was like, ah, I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. And they bought us all drinks, which I don't think was his choice, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was out of, out of, an, out of a, a nice uh, part of his heart. I think it was out of fear. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely out of fear. But it was, <laughs> There's cool moments like that that I was like, ah, this is, this is great. But yeah, that's when I started stand up. And I, uh, I just kept doing it little by little. And then I eventually, I moved out to LA and... Uh, had a really horrible first job, to be completely honest. It was, I, uh, yeah, I, and so I, uh, I, I got out of there. It was very much the LA story of like, hey, be careful with what you're getting into. I had a, uh, and oh, I'll stop being like coy about it. I, I was sexually harassed out of my first job. And so I was like, oh, like this is not good. And that, that led to like, uh, like, like a bunch of sadness because like I'm unemployed. Yeah. Uh, I'm like that, that, that company repped me as an actor. And so they, obviously I quit that. I quit the whole thing. So I was like, nah, I don't, I don't do that. Like, I'm just, thankfully I'm Midwestern enough to be like, no, I don't, I don't do these things. But, uh, <laughs> turns out, yeah, that was, I was just like, okay. So I got out of there. Um, but thankfully for all that, like that, that kind of sitting there, I was like, man, where's the stand up for this? And so I went back and I started doing stand up at a place called Flappers in Burbank and mm -hmm. then started doing it at other places. Uh, and it was, it was so much fun. And I just realized, ah, this is what I want to be doing. So, yeah. It's, it's, yeah I was, yeah, go, oh, ahead, go, go, go ahead, Connor. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Uh, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. So I, uh, anytime you say any little landmarks, I'm like, all right, cool. I like it. <gasps> oh, that's so perfect. Oh, well then, yeah, you know exactly where, I saw the UCLA shirt. I was like, wait, hold up. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't go here. I just, I root for him. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very unfortunate that a lot of stories turn out like that like like where they say be careful what you're getting into and then something like that happens and then the person that ends up benefiting is the person that did the wronging in the first place and i feel like those now those stories are finally coming to light which is good but like i feel like that's just been the toxic hollywood for so long and it's very okay. but I'm, i mean you've come out of it great right you're coming out of it great and you have a big following on tiktok and you have a twitch streams now and you're doing a lot of comedy and a good comedy comes out of it and stuff like that so it's glad Absolutely. to hear that you're, you've picked it up and you're doing great with it. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. It, it definitely it worked out for me and I'm, I'm thankful that it did. I, you know, as you said, like a lot of the stories are coming out. So, some, some of the stories are coming so, out. Sorry, I should well, say yeah, some. Yeah, and, and sorry, I, some. No, no, you're, you're, you're right. Because well, there's the problem though, is that is the, like from the outside world, it would look like a lot, but there's, it's, it's just kind of sad that it's like, yeah, uh, you know, and. It's probably not even the tip of the iceberg yet yeah it's probably not, not even the iceberg not even and that's and that's the part where it's just like man I, like you just it, it's sad because especially coming from like a comic perspective like when when my whole goal is to like make people laugh make people smile and things like that and a lot of comics are but like 
they, this, that industry is so toxic and taken advantage of so much. I, th I think stand up, thankfully, less than say like acting and, and certainly less than modeling um, been, been part of that world. And it's, it's just, it's a lot of weirdness. It's just kind of a, it's a weird world to be a part of. And so <clears throat> I think people that are looking, especially if they're listening to this and are thinking like, oh, I want to do that. Like, be careful. Like there is, there, like always know what your lines are and know not mm -hmm. to cross them and, and definitely be, be safe it's it's not it's not safe out there i feel like a lot of that comes from like people that get into acting more or less are people that are so desperate to get into acting like you're talking about the people that work at the restaurants and stuff like that are just looking for that big break so they say yeah you can get this part but this has to happen that's why they're taking advantage of so much because like mm -hmm. you know desperate people desperate times you know it's a saying desperate times desperate measures to them Absolutely. that is desperation like i need this part i need to start my career but unfortunately, it happens way too much to mm -hmm. way powerful of people. And, and the worst part, I think, for me, seeing stories like this is the amount of people that will back the big companies or the people that did it. It's unbelievable how many people will back. I, I met someone the other day. I am not kidding you. I met someone two weeks ago that's a huge, still a huge fan of Bill Cosby. How? How are you a big <laughs> fan of Bill Cosby? Makes no I sense. It, it blows my mind. I immediately it's like, I stopped talking yeah. to that person. I was like, there's no way that this is, <laughs> you, you can't, you cannot be a fan of this man. Yeah, no, like, uh, like, even if you think his jokes are good, like you, st you can't, you can't support the person. That one told of the them. biggest serial rapists yeah. of all time. Of all time. Of all like, time. I mean, uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy to me. The, the depth. Well, and it's also crazy. The amount of the, the cover up, the things like that, that go on that it's just, I mean, it's, Look, I mean, this is one of the things like I think like Kevin Spacey wasn't a monster, like wasn't a monster just once. You know what I mean? He wasn't no, a monster like in 2019. A lot of times. Yeah. 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 And everyone knew. I mean, there's a uh, gosh, who's the director that I used to have what's called boys parties. Um, it's 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 you can Google it. Um, he, he directed X-Men. Wasn't it? Brian Singer. There it is. Oh, Brian Singer. I forgot about his stuff, too. Oh, my God. And, He's still he's still there. He still directs, and it's just still like getting, still getting plenty of projects somehow. Mm -hmm. And and the mm -hmm. I mean, you could Google Brian Singer's Boys Parties, and so I, uh, because I was you know in like I was part of this management company that knew him very well. Thankfully, I I never went over and I never did any of those things. But my God, I knew I knew friends that had gotten that had gotten there, and it was it was just there's only so much that I can say on on camera because I don't want to get sued. But yeah, like, of course, it, yeah. <laughs> just the the monstrosities that that exist out there it's it's wild and it's just it's it's something i think that hopefully at some point hollywood will have to change and that that's going to require a, a massive a like removal of the the dark curtain that hides all of the things that they do so yeah, this is yeah. what we're gonna hope for i mean there's every i feel like every year there's another one coming out i mean you got that mm -hmm. one um what's uh the guy there was a big controversy when joker came out because the song used, uh, what's his name? Gary Glitter, I think, right? Does that sound right? Something like that? Eh, who cares? Who cares about his name? He's an awful person. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> but they had a huge controversy. They used that in there because he was the same thing. He was in the big ring in the UK with the children's um, program guy, which we won't even get in. That's a huge story. Yeah. We won't even get into that. But it's just, it's really unfortunate to hear stories like that. But you, and I'm, like I said, I'm happy to see that you've come out of it and mm -hmm. been very successful from it. And you could talk about it and, and have no fear talking about it. Because a lot of people that they have the fear talking about it. But before uh, we wrap up the show a little bit, I wanted to ask about your streaming. Mm -hmm. See that you're streaming a lot. Let's try, let's try and change the subject completely. Let's talk about. Yes, it. Sorry, I, this got in such a darker <laughs> you are place. All, oh, you're all good. We get we get great. deep on yeah. this podcast. Yeah, we don't we was, don't worry about that. It was it was deep. Uh, let's talk about streaming really quick. So you started yeah. doing streaming. Um, do you take that as seriously as your TikTok and your comedy, or is this more for fun that you're doing your streaming? So I I love video games so mm -hmm. much. I've play I played forever. Um, and I, I like pretty much, I think I was like four when I started playing like the original on the original NES. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved it so much. Uh, so I, I've actually, thought about, it's something I've always wanted to do. It's something I never was like, I'll never have the following to do that. And now I kind of do it. I'm like, ah, <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I take it seriously. I, uh, you know, Twitch is, uh, uh nice and, and there's ways to monetize it and things like that. I think that I, I definitely focus more on TikTok because it's easily my largest platform. Mm -hmm. Um, and stand up, 
stand up is so much fun, but I, I tour colleges and that's, that's kind of my thing. So I just go bounce around to different colleges and do my thing. And I have my hours. So it's weird because stand up, I mean, I've, I've already started writing a second hour, mm. but right now I'm, I'm looking to get that first one shot. And so it's kind of stand up is the thing that I have to think the least about at the moment, just because it's kind of ingrained. And then TikTok probably most and then Twitch about mid tier because I just love it so much. It's just mm. so much fun. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to have to have you on again in the future because uh, we got to wrap up on our time. But there is so much we could talk to you. <laughs> I think we could just oh, keep, yeah. going we can keep going and going for a long time. I'd love to be back, guys. This has been so much fun. I, uh, I appreciate you having me. No, of course. We appreciate you coming on and having so much energy. That's not always a thing that happens with guests. <laughs> you with energy. They just sit there, yes, uh, like that's not, nah, not really my style. We had, uh, we did have an interview where uh, this one, um, one guest answered all of our questions in the first five minutes. So that was mm. rough. We're like, all right, now we have to freestyle with this. Let's, uh, let's see how we do. You so. speed run it. That's uh... yeah, that's what we did. Mm. And hey, hey, we did. It was we a did new it. world record. We did yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> new world nice. record with them. But thank you so much for coming on, guys. We'll be right back with Steve Hofstetter. So stay right there.